Hey you, what's up? It's Matt and in this video we're going to be looking at Dale's Flight Simulator from simpilot3dm.com. He also has his own YouTube channel. Make sure uh, at some point to go over there, hit his uh, subscribe button over there as well, okay? Uh, I've had the opportunity to kind of play around and look at this flight simulator for about the last uh, month or so and I am, I am thoroughly impressed. I really love the flexibility that has gone into this. The wraparound experience with, uh, with three monitors. This thing is it's, it's beautiful in every way and just really creates a fully immersive experience in this particular cockpit. I've got some footage. Dale has created a flight sim that's configured with uh, three 65 inch 4K TVs wrapped around. Uh, so they're all on a stand. Also two 24 inch touchscreen monitors uh, right there in the front for the cockpit itself. Uh, they could be used with an optional altimeter motives G5 panel uh, or when removed, uh, it will work flawlessly with air manager and two knobsters for both touchscreens and multiple aircraft configurations. Uh, so there's two knobsters, little dual encoder knobs uh, that can be, th there's one by the uh, the throttle unit and one over by the uh, the cyclic stick. Uh, so that way, any basically anything that's being used or touched, manipulated inside of one of those touchscreen uh, gadgets can be manipulated using the dual encoder. Uh, this particular setup that we're looking at here in Dale's footage is using the uh, black square, created the Eid Cicada, the TBM 930 and the 850 with dual G3000 MFDs and dual GTC 580 touch controllers so that you can pretty much operate the entire uh, system. The 850 is going to be your uh, non-digital uh, version of the Eid Cicada with the, uh, the steam gauges and the 930 will be your uh, more glass cockpit panel like what we're seeing here. Um, the bezels uh, that are being used for the G3000 and the MFDs, the dual GTC 580s, uh, they can be imported into Air Manager from Simstrumentation. Don't worry, I'll leave the links uh, for that down in the description um, so that you guys can go check that out. Now, the G3000 bezels uh, could be easily populated along with the rest of the panel with Microsoft Flight Simulator's pop-out manager. So as long as the air, airplane or the aircraft that he's flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator has a G3000 um, or one of these uh, 580s, they could be popped out and used inside of Air Manager, but the bezel itself actually comes from Air Manager, uh, from that simstrumentation. You basically just download it into a folder on your computer, click the import button in Air Manager, and now you have uh, the, the correct bezel uh, to use, which is really cool there. All right. Uh, the 65 inch TVs that we're looking at, uh, they are mounted on a next level racing monitor stand. The front, t uh, the front TV that we're looking at runs in 4k. The two side ones are in there in 3k. The two touch screens that we're looking at are on their own little, uh, stand there with the visa mounts on the back of there. So they're kind of freestanding connected to, uh, the mount down, uh, towards the floor. Those are running at 1080 and all of this is using a Gen 14 Intel CPU, the NVIDIA GeForce 4090 GPU or a video graphics card, okay? Th this thing can be used with numerous aircraft with the two touch screens, the way that this thing is set up and with a 4090 GPU is gonna run pretty much anything that you want. Flight controls are kind of set up in a way that uh, allow you or allow Dale to sit in the right seat. And I thought that to me at first, I was like, that's weird. I couldn't imagine having the flight or the throttle on the left and uh, the cyclic or the stick in the right in the right hand. And there's a pretty simple explanation for that. Dale is a CFI, is a CF double I. He's a flight instructor. So he's used to sitting in the right seat. So when he built his flight sim uh, like this, he's like, I think I'm gonna sit in the right seat. So I'm gonna put the throttle unit on the left and the cyclic or the stick in the right seat so or in the right hand which makes total sense now check this out this is really cool he actually made it so it's kind of ambidextrous so those uh the the controls can actually be lifted up they're actually mounted with a magnet system and they can be swapped around and reused uh in there now i had the question at first was he had a stick in there for regular aircraft that normally uses a a cyclic so uh, I got that question answered, and here's what Dale said. He said, uh, there are, are so many GA planes now which have sticks. Obviously, all of the Cirrus planes, uh, the line of all the Diamond planes, and many other light trainers, sport or experimental planes, using sticks. And add the ability to fly fighters, helicopters, the Airbus line, and the Verpal stick makes uh, a lot of sense to me. And you know what? Dale, you're right. Uh, 
just right here, you kind of sold me on that concept because I'm trying to build an RV-10, uh, which is Vans aircraft. It's an experimental, and it makes perfect sense. Maybe the weird one out is the Cessnas that I keep flying in the aircraft here. So, um, And I really love the idea, especially if I were to build a helicopter sim, that uh, you could actually do that. And with Verpal, uh, they have all of these different items, the sticks, the base mounts, everything that you need in order to uh, to do all this. So um, this particular setup, flight controls include Verpal throttles, the Constellation Alpha Prime joystick, which is on a Warbird base, okay? So you buy the base and then you buy the stick that you want to go with that. If you're flying a helicopter, you can get a base with a longer stick, uh, basically a longer, uh, rod, I guess a rod, uh, and then you would even attach the joystick to that. Um, if you're flying helicopters, you can also get a side, uh, a, I'm not going to call it a side stick being a helicopter guy. It's a collective. Um, so that's going to be your, your throttle and your power. And that's what's going to give you lift and get you off the ground. So you can also set that up with Verpal. I'll leave the links for everything that we're referencing down in the, uh, down in the comments. Okay. Uh, this is also using the Thrustmaster TPR pedals for uh, rudder control as well. If you guys are like, hey, I want to see more of what Dale's doing, go go over to his website. I'll leave a link down in the description for that. Like and subscribe on his page and uh, make sure to show him some love on that. I already kind of mentioned this. The flight controls are also mounted via magnets. Um, so like really strong, like earth level magnets uh, that you can get right off of Amazon. Yeah, magnet mounted, swap them around as needed. The ambidextrousness there, totally awesome idea there. So great job on that. Other sim accessories. So let's talk about what else this thing has because there's not enough already slapped into this thing. Uh, this is just a, a beautiful, such, such a functional flight simulator. I love it. So um, other sim accessories include a Flight Sounds Dual Pro GA Flight Sim Intercom. All right. Uh, I'll throw a picture up of this, but what this is doing is basically allowing you can connect this via USB to your computer and it allows you to use that uh, as an intercom with real life aircraft headsets. So you can use your, uh, your, your, your Bose headset or your David Clark's, whatever it is that you guys have that you fly your real aircraft with. You can plug it right into this thing. Um, and what's cool is it works with two. So it's an, a literal intercom. So if you got your buddy over there and you throw on your Bose headset, hand them your old David Clark's, and then um, you guys can sit there and, and talk all you want and talk about what you're doing in the, uh, in the aircraft. So also has a butt kicker gamer plus haptic device because who, who doesn't need that kick at the butt while they're uh, playing in the uh, the flight sim so a couple other things worth noting is the uh, just uh, we've already talked about it is the the level of flexibility uh with this particular sim the level of flexibility to work with different aircraft dale has this thing set up to work with multiple general aviation aircraft the g5 panel overlay from altimeter motives is going to work with numerous aircraft Let's talk about real quick uh, the GTN 750. So it, it, G, GTN 750 is being used in a lot of the configurations that Dale's created here. So any aircraft with GTN 750 uh, can be operated with the PMS 50 GTN software, uh, which I understand Dale has a lifetime license to use for only 50 bucks. Go check that out. Again, I'll leave a link down in the description. Check that out. Another software that Dale inspired me to purchase myself was uh, Navigraph Charts. For updates, moving maps, flight planning, um, I made a, a video on that earlier this week. I'll leave a link uh, somewhere up here. You can go check that out and uh, get an idea how that works. So uh, real quick, quick thank you uh, to Dale uh, for giving me the opportunity to do a review on this particular flight sim. I really appreciate that. You guys can go to simpilot3dm.com. Make sure to go check out his website, his YouTube channel. Links in the description for all of this. Give him a like and subscribe before you guys do that. Make sure to hook me up with a like and subscribe. And uh, let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think of Dale's uh, flight sim? So leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. I'll see you guys in another video. You guys take care, all right?